Hey guys, it is Revy Goldwasser and this YouTube video is all about are you a codependent? So are you? So before we dive deep, I'm going to basically tell you what a codependent is because a lot of people get confused and they think being a codependent means they're not independent. They're like, I'm not codependent, I'm independent. Nothing to do with that. A codependent is somebody who wants to control, save, rescue, fix, or change you. Control, save, rescue, fix, or change you. That's what a codependent is. And let me tell you why being a codependent is so bad. Because what happens, a person who's trying to do the changing, the fixing, the saving, the rescuing, and the controlling, we're so fixated on an unhealthy person. Usually a codependent attracts alcoholics, attracts abusive people, attracts toxic people, that they're not really addressing their own needs. So we're going to dive deep more about being a codependent, what it means, and most importantly, what you can do about it if you think you are a codependent. So check it out. Hey guys, it is Revy Goldwasser. And again, this video is all about codependency. So again, what is a codependent? A codependent does not mean you're not independent. There's a lot of independent people that are codependent. I personally am codependent. I used to be codependent. I'm not anymore, but I'm super independent, fiercely independent, make my own money, run my own household. But for the bulk of my life, I was very codependent even though I was independent in my work and, and, and how I live my life. Again, a codependent is somebody who controls, saves, fixes, rescues, and changes. That's it, the five. That's what a codependent is to do for the other person. So I'm trying to control your behavior. I'm trying to fix your behavior. I'm trying to change it. I'm trying to rescue. I'm trying to save you. And on an extreme example, it's when you have, a, let's say, a husband and a wife and the husband is an alcoholic. So the wife is the codependent, right? So the wife is trying to save her husband who's the alcoholic. So the husband gets thrown in jail, she saves him and pulls him out and he says, I promise I will go to AA meetings and she said, okay, but then he gets another DUI, gets thrown in jail again, she saves him again. Or she empties out all the alcohol bottles and he's like, I swear I'll stop drinking, I'll start, and she says, okay. And then she's like, you know, I'll just do all the grocery shopping or I won't give him any money so he can't buy the alcohol. You see how she's trying to control the situation or she's trying to save the situation or trying to fix him. Honey, I'll go with you to the meetings. I'll drive you to the meetings. I'll pick you up, I'll stay there. Like everything she, or and it could be he, him to her again, but I'm just giving that example. It's an extreme example, obviously, with, with somebody who's an alcoholic, but it can happen with anything. It can happen with siblings. It can happen, of course, all the time with, with spouses, with friendships, with relationships. And usually what happens, you have the codependent person who's, who has such lack and neediness because they have their own issues that they'd rather fixate on the toxic person, whether he's an alcoholic, a drug user, verbal abuser, emotional abuser, or just a real mean, mean person that's always angry and temper tantrums. And you see that a lot in relationships. My focus always is, is with you know couples, husbands and wives, girlfriends and boyfriends. But you can see that in, in, in a myriad of, of relationships. The key transformation here, if you feel that you're codependent, that you're constantly exhausted, and depleted and, and almost wiped out because nothing that you can do or that have been doing is helping because that's the truth. You see, it doesn't matter how much you control him. It doesn't matter how much you try to save him. It doesn't matter how much you try to fix him, how much you try to, you know, do all rescue him and, and, and do all these things. It doesn't matter because if that toxic person is not interested in changing, he won't. It's not up to you to maneuver and and figure it out and really you know do that for him what you're doing instead is you're enabling the behavior you're actually almost giving him permission to do it again because you keep giving him the way out you keep saying oh gosh you know let's say you're codependent and your husband is always screaming and yelling so instead of saying listen I can't handle the screaming and yelling either you got to fix it or I'm out or I'm moving out or we're breaking up or whatever it is what do you do instead you're like 
okay, well, I won't piss him off or I'll make sure to make the right foods for dinner so he won't get angry or I'll be really quiet when I go into the bedroom so I don't wake him up or, you know, I'll make sure he eats four times a day so his blood sugar doesn't get off and he won't get pissed and yell and scream. Like all of a sudden you're, you're manipulating and changing your behavior in order to control his behavior. I mean, this is really exhausting. It's, it gets exhausting. And, and the problem here is that you're codependent. The, the one who has the issue actually is you. Like, you think he has the issue? And yes, he does. I'm not mitigating that he doesn't, he does or doesn't have the issue. But I'm not interested in him. I'm interested in you. Because if you're watching this video, that means you are beginning to suspect that you have an issue. And you probably do. I recognize with my husband that I was codependent. I actually wasn't just codependent with my husband. What you're going to find as well is this behavior that you have to try and fix and save and control and rescue and, and do all those things. You actually do it with a lot of people. The common denominator of these things is you. You realize that you're doing it maybe with your family, you're doing it with your friends, you're doing it with your work. And most of the time you do it with those closest to you. It's usually your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. So what do you do? What do you do when you realize that you're in a toxic relationship with somebody who's verbally abusing you, emotionally abusing you, God forbid, God forbid, physically abusing you. And if you are in that, for me, I'm like, call the police, go to social services, whatever it is, and get out. I mean, I don't know anything about that. That's way out of my realm. But when there's physical abuse to me, that is just, uh, it, makes me, it makes me nauseous. It really does. So again, back to not the physical component, but the, you know, somebody who's an alcoholic, who's a drug user, who has massive anger issues and temper tantrums and verbally abusive, calling you stupid and dumb and an idiot and good for, for nothing. And you're so ugly and you're so fat. And you know, this is emotional abuse and verbal abuse. And if you keep saying, oh, well, he doesn't really mean it. And oh, well, you know, he's just in a bad mood. That's not true. All you're doing is enabling this continued bad behavior. So you have a choice. You have a choice. Your choice is that you don't have to put up with that. You don't. You don't owe him. You don't need him. I don't, I know you think you need him, but I'm telling you that you don't. These are all limiting beliefs that you put in your head. That's just not true. It's not true. So if you start being open-minded and realizing that you can look through other windows and other doors into your situation, and recognize that the one that needs to change is you, you're going to improve your life. And the way you improve it is you don't go and bail him out from jail. And you don't, you know, tiptoe around him. And you don't, you know, tolerate verbal abuse. You create boundaries for yourself. I have a boundary model video here on my channel you should watch. You start creating boundaries to protect yourself. Because you shouldn't be saving, fixing, rescuing, controlling him. You should be saving, fixing, controlling, rescuing you. And usually what happens with codependence, this, this is the paradigm shift, is we have such trauma that we haven't been able to cope with that it's much easier for us to cope with somebody else's issues and it makes us feel needed, right? It makes us feel important. It makes us feel valued. But that's a toxic affirmation. It's not a positive affirmation of who you are. It's a negative affirmation. It's, it's, it's completing you in a negative way. It's not healthy and it will deplete you. It will deplete you because it's not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. You cannot continue that. So own your power and tap into who you are as a person and make a commitment and act on it and say, you know what? I'm not going to save you and rescue him because I promise you guys, if he wants to change, he will. If he doesn't want to change, he won't. But that's not your decision. Your decision is not to control him. Your decision is to control yourself. And if you keep behaving this way, it's just going to, it's just going to escalate and there, there will be an explosion or an implosion, but some form of plosion will happen. It's, it's going to break. Something will break. So save yourself. Nurture yourself, control yourself, fix yourself. And that's how you become a fearless woman. All right, guys, Rebbe Goldwasser. I have my four-step boundary model down here on the notes. Check out my other videos, and I will see you soon. Ciao.